Hello everybody, my name is Paris Stu and today I'd like to talk to you about neurological observational chart. This chart is normally filled when there is a um, head trauma or head injury. I'm going to specifically talk about um, head injuries that happen in nursing homes or long-term care uh, facilities. Um, <clears throat> in this type of setting, the frequency of which that I've uh, done some research and indicated here at the bottom of uh, the page uh, is as follows. Um, when there is a head injury, before we go ahead, I'll just explain what a minor, moderate, and a major head injury is. Normally, a minor head injury is classified um, under a GCS score between 14 to 15. Um, a minor head injury is just cuts and bruises to the head, maybe some swelling. Um, it could also be accompanied with some headache, uh, some nausea. Uh, but there should be no vomiting, there should be no seizures after the fall, there should be no severe headaches, um, obviously, and no, nothing penetrating into the skull. Um, as you can see, it's just it's a minor head injury. However, if it's a moderate or a major head injury, you will see vomiting, seizures uh, happening. Um, you will see, for example, an object penetrating into the skull or some depression around the skull. There could be loss of consciousness of five minutes or more. Um, so it's, it's, as you can see, it is really moderate and severe. Um, if that's the case, uh, most likely when you let your on-call physician know, the resident of the nursing home is more likely to be sent to a hospital. And um, until they come, you can follow every 30 minute rule. It's just make sure, you know, or an immediate uh, care for the patient, whatever they need until they are transported to hospital. Uh, so technically, all the observations that happen in uh, long-term care, it's, it has to do with minor head injury. And um, if the minor head injury that you're dealing with in a long-term care um, is witnessed, and there is either no evidence or there's just minor evidence of a head injury, this is the protocol you follow. You do one set of observation if they are normal and the GCS score is normal, uh, the vital signs are normal, you do every 12 hours until you reach 24 hours. That means you do three sets of uh, recording um, in here. So that means this is one recording, two recording, three recording. However, at any of this point, the patient's vitals or GCS score starts to go down. You follow the news guideline. If it's a single parameter greater than three or a total news greater than three or a single parameter greater than five, sorry, greater than three, Again, we are going to follow the news guideline, and I'm going to show you what news guideline is. News guideline is literally, it takes the vital signs that you take into consideration. If they are within range, it gives it a score of zero. If they're not within range, based on the severity, it gives them a different score. And um, based on that score, they give you a different type of frequency to watch the patient. I will show them to you in a bit. And as well, if it was a witness fall, if it was moderate or major, this is the frequency you follow, and you probably are likely to send the patient, because it's a moderate head injury, you probably want to send them to a hospital after talking to or consulting with your physician. However, if it was unwitnessed, uh, you do not know what happened, again, this is the frequency you follow, even if it was a minor head injury, okay? Um, this is what you do. For a minor head injury unwitnessed, this is what you're going to do. We're going to um, do a Q30, that's every 30 minutes, until GCS score is 15, or the patient's baseline. Uh, the patient or the resident might have a normal GCS score of 14 due to uh, aging and other reasons. And that's okay. So you do Q30 until the baseline, if it's 14, until 14 is reached. If it is, you move to the next step. You do every 30 minutes for two hours. You do every one hour for the next two hours, and eventually you do every eight hours until 24 hours. At any point, again, at this time, if the patient's vital signs or GCS4 starts to deteriorate and go down, again, we're going to follow a news guideline. This is news guideline, and as you can see, uh, as I mentioned to you, these are all the vital signs that I explained, and all of these vital signs are going to be in the chart, which I will be explaining to you in a few minutes' time. They are color-coded, as you can see. If their vitals are within range, each get a score. If, for example, the respiratory rate is between 12 to 20, they get a score of 0. If their, let's say, oxygen saturation is at 95, they get a score of 1. Um, is there an oxygen supplement? No, score of 0. Is there a systolic blood pressure? Let's say, yes, it's at um, 219, so that's normal. 
and uh, what's their pulse? Let's say their pulse is at 91, so they get another score of 1. Are they alert? Yes, and let's say their temperature is, I don't know, 39.2. So what does the score of this one? It's a 2. So 2 plus 1 plus 1, it's 2, 3, 4. So we get a score of 4. You come down here, you try to find 4. 4 lies in this uh, uh, domain. So if their score is 4, you have to check them every 4 hours. If their score is between 0 to 2, you check them every tw 12 hours. If their score is 6 to 8, you check them every hourly. And if it is 9 and above, you have to record their observational frequency every 30 minutes. As you can see, you just have to review accordingly each patient. And review them, it means going and check off on them. It doesn't mean you're writing anything down. However, if they're not okay, not doing fine, and their score has changed, then obviously you have to comply with the new scoring. And if there's any changes in any of these cases, you have to call the physician. And if you are at score of 9 and above, you probably have to call 911. As you can see, this color, uh, it, it goes from lighter color to a darker. I try to use both systolic pressure as well as temperature. I color coded uh, these two, as you can see, both in a blood pressure as well as temperature in your neurological observational chart. But I wasn't able to color code your pulse, uh, respiratory rate, and oxygen. You just have to look at the chart below to rate them, and then you will find the total score right here. Nonetheless, let's just do one together. So this is your neurological observational chart. The time and date of the fall, you write in here. And uh, some uh, long-term cares have a sticker. You can just stick it right here. Patient's name, space provided, time and date. This is your observational frequency. So you look at this chart below. This is the guideline for a minor head injury. If it was witnessed, one set of observation, if it's normal, every 12 hours for the next 24 hours. If it was a witness or unwitnessed minor head injury, this is the frequency you follow. If it's moderate to major, again, this is the frequency you follow. More likely for a moderate to major, you call hospital um, or ambu ambulatory care. So you choose that guideline at the bottom and you put them here. For example, the first one, it's at 1 o'clock. So you write down 1 o'clock, June 1st. 1.30, June 1st. 2 o'clock. 2.30, and it keep going, so forth and so, so on. This is the GCS score. Um, it's com it's com it consists of um, I score, ver best verbal reasoning score, and motor, uh, motor verbal response. So when you examine your patient, you see that the eyes open spontaneously. You put a value here. If they are oriented, or for example, let's say they're not oriented, so you put it here. If they obey commands or if they don't, you find which one is the right answer and you just put a little dot in front of that. And at the end, you just add them up because there's a total here, as you can see. Now, each has a number associated with it. You just add it. So 4 plus 4 plus 6, that's a 14. So you write down 14 here. Then the next thing you're going to fill out is your limb movement, uh, which is arms and legs. If, they, if it's only a right or a left, you just put R or L. If they're both, for example, equally normal, you put the, a little dot here. However, let's, for example, for this one, if um, the leg, only the left leg is mild, mildly weak, so you choose to put here L. instead of a little dot because the right foot or the right leg is normal so you don't have to put anything but because the left is the one with the mild you just put an L if they were both for example weak then you choose for example if this is a next let's choose a next uh, in 30 minutes time you want to record the next one if they're both weak you put a dot indicating both but then the next observation you find that they're getting better and normal so they're both normal you put them here. So this is both weak, this is both normal, then both normal, both normal. So then what you see is a little trend that starts from here and now it's improving. That's perfect. And you want to see a good improvement or a constant value like this one keep going forward. Okay? That's why it's called a chart because you can actually connect the dots and see the flow of how the or the patient's progress. 
Now as for the size, uh, this is the size of the pupils. If they are reactive to lead, you put a plus sign. If not negative, and if it's sluggish, you put an S. This is a guideline for the pupil size. So if it's one millimeters, two millimeters, whatever they are. So for example, let's do one together. Your right eye, when you measured it, it was uh, size two. Was it reactive? Yes, it was. So you put a little plus sign. The left eye was also a two millimeter, but was it reactive? No, it wasn't. So you put a negative. Okay, that's how you fill it up. Now, the next set of information that I'd like to go through is a temperature. Temperature is in degrees Celsius in this case. Again, as you can see, it's color coded. Um, white, it's a score zero. Pink, which is these two, they should give you an alert sign, and that's a score of, it's a one. This is a darker pink, which is a score of two. And the most red, the most darker color, which is a score of three. So if you see, for example, the patient, let's say, you measure the patient's temperature. It's between 38.1 and 39. I don't need accuracy. I just want you to choose the temperature you measured. It's in which of these settings. If it was, for example, 38.5, 38.7, 38.9, I don't care. Any of those values, put a dot here. If in 30 minutes you measure them again and it's at 37.5, then it's in this range, right? Because it's between that range. So you put a dot here. And the next one, again, it's here. So this is good because look, it's trending down and it's staying constant in the white zone when that's going to be perfect. I'll just draw you a little, connect them together so you see the trend. See? Perfect. If it continues this way, then that means you're in a white color, which is a score of zero so that means the patient's temperature is now within range it wasn't before but now it is in range okay so there you go there you have a trend so this is the first vital sign that we measured remember this was in the new score and that's how you do it the second one is the pulse this is the second vital sign again you just write it down if the pulse is 72 beats per minute you put 72 here you write it down. The respiratory rate, is it 12 beat? Is it 12 breaths per minute? Yes, you just write 12. If it's whatever, you just write them down. And oxygen saturation, whatever it is, you write it down. And then you have to go back to that news guideline that I showed you before to make sure that, for example, is a respiratory rate between it? Yes, okay, they get a score of zero. And you're gonna remember that because you're gonna add each of these scores with respect to the temperature and blood pressure, and you're gonna write it here at, at the bottom later on, okay? So you're gonna fill all of these out, and then last but not least, we're gonna measure the blood pressure. So as you can see, blood pressure I've provided a range. Again, the exact value is not important, so please do not try to write diagonally here. It is 120 over eight. No, I don't wanna see. I don't wanna know exactly what it is because I've created a range, because this is time saving for you, and it is meant to cut down uh, give you more accuracy, more um, more speed, um, to trying to save you some time that um, you can do more, and that way you can do more more work more efficiently. Okay, so if this is by the way, you're going to indicate the systolic and diastolic pressure with respect to this arrow. Systolic means higher, uh, the diastolic is the lower end of the blood pressure, which makes sense. So the upper part of the double-headed arrow is systolic. The lower part of this arrow is diastolic. So we're going to record both systolic and diastolic pressure, as you can see here. Systolic, diastolic, and you connect the two because you want to see the range. But then we're going to only use the systolic to score the news right here. Remember, this was the news score, and I've also created color. You see super red, white color, shallow pink, darker pink, the same big red again. So we only care about the top heads, which is the systolic of each of these little arrows with respect to the color. We are not reading the bottom heads. No, it's not these. It's only, please, I'm emphasizing this because it's important. We only care about the top head. So make sure when you're reading the top head to score, you are using the colors for the top head, not the bottom. So for example, one, two, three, four. These four arrows, the top head, it's in the white section, so it gets a score of zero. But this arrow here, it's in the low pink, which is a score of one. That's a red flag for you, okay? That means you need to check up on your patient. Why is it? 
this, you know, this is a systolic pressure. A systolic pressure should not be between 101 and 110. That's too low for systolic. Uh, but this one, for example, it's, for example, the patient is around, what is it, 120 over 70. And it's a range. It could be 61 to 70. And it's okay. This patient's uh, uh, blood pressure is between 120 to 130. So let's say if, it, if it's 121 over 81 or 85 or 86, 7, 8, 9, doesn't matter because it's a range. You see? So this is how you have to record it. Regardless of what the value is, you just find the range and you put the error in the middle. So we're not going to try to find, okay, this is 201, 202, 305. No. If it's a range, just put a little error in the middle, okay? And that saves you a lot of time. And that's all you need to do. So once you have a score for the temperature, well, this is easy because you just look at it. If it's in the white, it gets a score of zero. For the pulse respiratory oxygen, you go down and you find what score they are. And for blood pressure, again, anything in white for the top head gets a score of zero. Anything for the top head in red gets a three in a... Very light pink gets a score one, and a darker pink gets a score two. Okay, add them all together, and you're going to write it here. And then you're going to initial here at the bottom. Okay, uh, perfect. Once you're done, you're going to do the second one. Once you're done, you're going to do the third observation, fourth observation, fifth observation. Once you're done, Towards the end, you will get a beautiful chart. This is the reason why we're trying to use scales and dots, because eventually you will get to see, for example, a trend like this. This means that this is perfect. The patient is stable and it continues to be stable. But for example, let's say if it goes down, that means the patient is deteriorating in the verbal response, and that should be alarming. Why? You need to consult with the doctor. If this is constant, that's perfect. Same, similarly, it gives you a little trend and it can tell you, for example, with respect to the temperature or even with respect to the blood pressure. You see, it is um, high regions and then it's going low and this is normal and then it's going lower and lower. This is it's getting worse and it's coming back up. See, it gives you a trend. Um, I hope you find this video helpful and uh, thank you for watching.